a lot of people who may not have gone through things that seem as traumatic as you went through would definitely be very badly affected, very depressed, perhaps suffering post-traumatic stress disorder. You don't feel you are? Uh, well, I didn't. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is that when I came out, I got very good help, uh, as my family did. Um, we went to Lynham in Wiltshire. They're the RAF team, the medical team, enabled us to tell our story and get it out. Mm -hmm. Um, and the theory being, of course, that if you tell your story pretty quickly after a traumatic event, um, you can manage it rather than suppressing it and it managing you at a later stage. That must be very difficult for a family to well, readjust it, after that. It's very difficult. I, I, um, I didn't recognise my son when I came out, mm -hmm. you know. He'd grown up so much. And um, I, I, one of the reasons uh, I set up Hostage UK because I, primarily for families, is because I realise that the families have uh, even more difficult time in some respects than mm. the hostage because they just don't know. I have no idea didn't... if you were alive. No, but... my wife didn't know for three and a half years um, I was alive. I'll tell you what, though, if you were captured today, you wouldn't be alive, would you? I think it's possibly uh, the case that I would be killed because now uh, hostage take cha taken uh, a change and... Um, has become, in a sense, very, very brutal. I mean, people were murdered in my day. If I'd been a member of the military, um, yeah. I would have been killed. But, but you you thought, a, they thought yeah, you were you a CIA a, agent, and, and they, no. put, they numerous times put guns to your head. Well, I was given a mock execution. I was beaten. Uh, they believed I was... Uh, at the end of 12 months, after having a fairly rough time, they said, we believe you and they were about to release me, but they didn't because some un event in the outside world, I'm not sure what it was. How long were you on your own before you realised that John McCarthy and Brian Keenan were nearby? I mean, actually, the room next door, it turned out, weren't they? Yeah, exactly, about four and three-quarter years. Four and a half, a quarter four, years? Over four years. Totally on your own? Completely, with nobody. When anyone came in the room, I had to wear a blindfold. So I didn't see anybody, and if I was in a dark room, metal shutters were put in front of the window, so no light came in if I was in a room upstairs. So how... Mm. I mean, that how do you is emerge torture. intact? How That's do you, what, what is in your head? I mean, you say you wrote this book in your head. Is that how you got through to, to well, you imagine see, I, I was, things? Yes, it was. I was chained by the hands and feet to the wall for 23 hours and 50 minutes a day, one visit to the bathroom. And um, what you have to do in a situation like that, first of all, you have to keep hope alive. Secondly, you've got to use your mind, use your brain, keep your brain alive. And that is what I, what I try to do by writing, by imagining, by creating stories, uh, all those things, keeping my mind going. I said to myself, look, you've taken many journeys in your life, which I had, I travelled the world. Now's the time to take an interior journey to get to know yourself better. Mm. And um, that's what I try to do. Terry, here's where you are a different man and a better man than me. Because in my mind, in all that time, I would be plotting revenge. That's what I'd be doing. You knew who took you. I think you may even have met some of the, the, the people who have taken you subsequently. Um, you believe it was Hezbollah, who are now a, a political party, an elected uh, political party. Um, I would have been keeping score. Why, why did you not have, or do not have, those feelings of revenge? Well, I think two reasons, really. First of all, I do not agree, or I don't agree at all with hostage shaking, obviously. But sometimes I can understand why these young fellows get engaged in that. And I think if you can understand why people do what they do, then that's, that's part of it there. Why do they keep you in such inhumane mm. conditions? I mean, they could have detained you, fine, but why chain you to a wall? Why blindfold you? Why threaten to that's kill you? That's their way of behaving. I mean, I can't explain why they do That's just their way of behaving, and that, that's how they, they did it. I, I can't say more than that. I think the second thing is that if you allow anger to fester, it will do you more harm than it does those whom you hold it against. There's no doubt about that. And um, I don't want that. And I think one of the obligations on me, uh, I, which is a personal obligation, I believe at every opportunity one should be working for reconciliation and peace in this world because the world is so divided. What you mentioned earlier about um, keeping hope. You have to keep hope. How mm. did you do that? What, what did you focus on to think, I will get out of this one day? Well, first of all, I think it's part of my nature to be hopeful. You know, I'm an optimist. Secondly, 
Um, I have faith, and in, in captivity, my faith was reduced to something which was essentially simple. I could say in the face of my captors, you have the power to break my body. You've tried. Mm. It's tortured. You have the power to bend my mind, and you've tried. But my soul is not yours to possess. Now, I can't define soul, but what I meant was the whole person that I am. Whatever happens, that lies in the hand of God and will not be taken by anybody else. For more of the same, just click here. And don't forget, you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel.